This is part two of the lesson on writing exponents with different bases. In this section, we're going to take a look at solving exponential equations, so solving equations that have exponents in them. I'm just going to zoom in first. All right, the first one says solve each of the following equations, and I know it's an equation because it has an equal sign in the middle, right? It's not just an expression, it's got an equal sign in between the terms. So I have three to the power of x minus eight equals 81. Now, rule number one when you're solving an exponential equation is you want to write the powers as powers of the same base. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take 81 and try to write it as a power of 3. So 81, we could try to use trial and error on our calculator to figure it out, or I am going to use my power sheet. If I look at the powers of 3, 81 is 3 to the power of 4. So I'm going to say that 81 is 3 to the power of 4. So you want to start by writing them as powers of the same base. And then from here, since the bottom is equal, 3 equals 3, then whatever the top is, whatever x minus 8 is, it has to be the same thing as 4, because this should be 3 to the 4 equals 3 to the 4. So when they're equal and they have the same base, the exponents should also be equal. So I'm just going to write down here that x minus 8 has to equal 4. And then I'm going to use my grade 9 math skills to solve. To move the negative 8 to the other side, we're going to do the opposite and add 8. So x is going to equal 12. And you can check that by substituting it back in. If you do 12 minus 8, 12 minus 8 is 4, and then on your calculator, if you check, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. All right, the next equation, we have 4 to the power of 2x minus 6 equals 1 over 16. So what I want to do first is I want to write what's on the left and on the right using the same base. So I notice the 4 is the smaller of the two. So I'm going to see if I can write 1 over 16 as a power of 4. I'm going to look at my power sheet. I'm going to look at my powers of 4, and I see that 16 is 4 squared. So 16 is 4 squared, but this isn't just a 16. It's a 1 over 16. So because it's a fraction, the kind of exponent that makes a fraction is a negative exponent. Negative exponents make fractions. So anytime you see a fraction, right, that should be a clue that it's going to be a negative exponent here. So now that the bases are equal, 4 equals 4, the exponents must also be equal. So we say 2x plus 6 must equal negative 2. And then we solve this using our grade 9 skills. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So 2x equals negative 8. And then we divide both sides by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Okay, in part C, I have 2 to the power of 5x minus 3 equals 256 to the power of x plus 2. Now, I have more exponents going on than I did in the other question, but I still want to start by writing them as powers of the same base. So I notice that the smallest base is 2. I look at my powers of 2, and I see that 2 to the power of 8 is 256. So I'm going to leave the first part. And for the second part, instead of 256, I'm going to write in... 2 to the power of 8, and then to the power of x plus 2. Now, before I go any further, I am going to simplify this a little bit. I have brackets with an exponent on the outside, and the rule for that is that we multiply. So I'm going to multiply 8 by the x and the 2. So I get 2 to the power of 5x minus 3 equals 2 to the power of 8x plus 16. Now that both bases are the same, 
the exponents must be the same. So I say that 5x minus 3 equals 8x plus 16. And then I try my best to solve this grade 9 style. Uh, the first thing I notice is that I have x's on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to bring that 8x over to the other side, or you can bring the 5x over to this side. I think if I move the 5x over, I will end up not with negative numbers. So I'm going to subtract 5x this way. I get negative 3 equals 3x plus 16. I want to get the numbers on the other side, so I'm going to do the opposite and subtract 16. Although it looks like I'm going to end up with negatives after all. Negative 3 take away 16 is negative 19. And then I divide by 3 to get x equals negative 19 over 3. It's not a very nice number, but sometimes we get fractions as our answers. If we take a look at the next example, we have 64 to the power of 2x plus 10 equals 16 to the power of x minus 3. Now, I do not have anything past a power of 9 on my sheet. So I'm going to check to see if 64 is a power of 16. 16 to the 1 is 16. 16 squared is 256. So it skipped over 64, which tells me they're not both powers of 16. So what I'm going to do is look on my sheet to see if I can find a base that has 16 and 64. And I actually see 2. 4 squared is 16, and 4 to the power of 3 is 64, so I could write them both as powers of 4. I also notice 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 2 to the power of 6 is 64, so I could write them both as powers of 2. So it's up to you, either one. I think I'm going to choose the 4s. So 64 is 4 to the power of 3, and then that is still to the 2x plus 10. Now 16 is 4 to the power of 2, and that's still to the power of x take away 3. And then I'm going to simplify by multiplying out my exponents. So I'm going to multiply 3 by both of those terms. So I get 4 to the power of 6x plus 30. And then we multiply over here by 2. So 4 to the power of 2x take away 6. Now the bases are the same, so the exponents are the same. So 6x plus 30 equals 2x, take away 6. Now I see that the bigger number of the x's is on this side this time, so I think I'm going to take the 2x away and move it over. And I get 4x plus 30 equals negative 6. And then I need to move the 30 to the other side by subtracting 30. So 4x equals negative 36. And then I divide by 4 to get x equals negative 9. The last example is a little bit different although it still works the same way, I have 10 to the power of x squared minus 1 equals 1,000 x to the negative 1. Now my power sheet only goes up to 9, so when I want to write these as powers of the same base, I can't really use my power sheet. However, I know there's a neat little trick with 10s. If you count the number of zeros, that tells you what the power is. So I've got one zero here, so that's 10 to the power of 1. And this has one, two, three zeros, so that would be 10 to the power of 3. And if you don't remember that, you can just try doing different powers on your calculator until you find one that works. And 10 to the power of 3 is definitely 1,000. So I'm going to write this as 10 to the x squared minus 1. And the 1,000 is 10 to the power of 3 
the power of x minus 1. I will simplify by multiplying the 3 into the x and the 1. So I have 10 to the power of x squared minus 1 equals 10 to the power of 3x take away 3. Since the bases are the same, the exponents are the same. So x squared take away 1 equals 3x take away 3. This equation is a little bit more complicated than the other ones that we've been doing because it doesn't have just an x. It has an x squared, which means I want to move all of the terms over to one side. This is just like some of the questions we would have seen in our previous unit. So I'm going to move the 3x and the 3 to the other side by subtracting 3x and adding 3. So I have x squared, take away 3x, and then negative 1 plus 3 is plus 2, and there will be nothing left or a 0 left on the other side. Now to solve an equation like this, you have a choice of the two f's. You can either solve by factoring or you can solve by the quadratic formula. I'm going to see if I can factor this. I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to negative 3. Well, not a lot multiplies to 2. The only things we have that multiply to 2 would be 1 and 2. And the only way to make those into a negative 3 is if it was a negative 1 and a negative 2. And I'm just going to check negative 1 times negative 2 definitely equals positive 2. So this is x squared take away 1x take away 2x plus 2 equals 0. I'm going to group together my first two terms and last two terms. Take an x out of the first one and I'm left with x minus 1 and then take a negative 2 out of the second one, and I'm left with x minus 1. They both have an x minus 1 in common, so this factors to x minus 1 times x minus 2 equals 0. To finish this off, we actually need to solve for x, so we want to know what makes this equal 0. So either the first bracket is going to equal 0, or the second bracket is going to equal 0. And then I just solve each of those by adding 1 to this side to get x equals positive 1. Or add 2 to this side to get x equals positive 2. So this one had two different possible solutions, either 1 or 2.